بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم سید عاکف شاہ لیکچرر فائنینس ایٹ انسٹیٹیوٹ آف بزنس اسٹڈیز کوہاٹ یونیورسٹی آف سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی دی ٹائٹل آف دس کورس از بزنس ریسرچ میتھڈس اینڈ دا کورس کوڈ فار دس سبجیکٹ از ایم ایس تھری ہنڈریڈ اینڈ ٹویلو دس از لیکچر نمبر ٹین اینڈ دا ٹاپک فار ٹو ڈیز ڈسکشن از ہائپوتھیٹکو ڈیڈیکٹو میتھڈ The outline of this lecture comprises of the two agenda points. Number first is to know about the deduction and induction in a scientific research. And secondly, the hypothetical deductive method and its steps. So after listening to this lecture, student will be acquainted to have the knowledge about these two topics. Let's start with the deduction and induction. What is a dedux, deduction in a research, scientific research? Deduction is basically a process by which we arrive at a reasoned conclusion by logically journalization of a known fact. It means that the researcher is already acquainted with the journalized known fact and On the basis of that generalized known fact, he or she tries to find out the conclusion of the specific problem. For instance, or as an example, we can say, we all know that all high performer are highly proficient in their jobs. Anybody who is a high performer or a hard working person, generally to be considered as a highly proficient in their jobs when they will get employed. So on the basis of this generalized known fact, we conclude that if the John is, if John is a high performer, so therefore we conclude that he is highly proficient in his job. So we can see that on the basis of a generalized known fact, which is all high performer are generally the highly proficient in their lives or jobs. So we have deduced our specific problem to find out either the John is highly proficient in his job or not on the basis of known generalized fact. And we already know that John is a high performer. So therefore we have concluded that he is highly proficient in his job. Such kind of mechanism to find out solution to a problem is known as deduction process of research. The second scientific research method is induction. Now what is induction? Induction is the process where we observe the certain phenomena and on the basis of that we arrived at a conclusion. It means that deduction is the inverse of in, in, uh, induction and induction is the inverse mechanism of deduction. What a researcher normally, normally does in an induction process is to observe the specific phenomena and then he or she correlate it with the generalized known fact or theory available in the literature or in the previous researches and then after that he or she conclude that certain observed phenomena has relevancy with a particular theory or we can also say that an induction in induction we logically establish the journal proposition on the basis of observed facts so on the basis of certain observed facts what the researchers does is to formulate the journalized propositions for instance We can see that uh, production processes are the prime features of the factories or plants. Anybody who visit to any production company, factories or plant, there he or she might observe that certain manufacturing activities are going on and they are making the products, a particular product to be sold into the market later on. So with, the, with this observed facts that the factories or plants When we visit them, they are generally involved in the process of manufacturing certain products. So therefore, we can conclude that factories generally exist for the production purposes. 
so in this inductive research example what we have done is to not we but actually what the researcher normally does is to find is to observe the features available in the factories practically and then later on he can conclude or she can conclude that factory factories or the plant generally exist for the production purposes now let's discuss the hypothetical deductive method in detail this process of making research comprises of the seven steps which starts with the observation that is to observe the problem or the broad problem areas then do a little bit preliminary research or literature review preliminary information gathering about that problem how to solve that or what are the linkages of the variable with that problem in the third step making a theory formulation fourth one is hypothesizing Fifth one is further scientific data collection and measurement of the variable. At the sixth step, we do uh, statistical analysis of the data, that is correlation and hypothesis testing. And at the last step, we deduce or deduct the conclusion. Now let us discuss these points one by one in our next slides. What is an observation? An observation is the first step of the hypothetical deductive method of research in which what the researcher does is to sense the certain changes are occurring or that some new behavior, attitudes and feelings are surfacing in one's environment. The researcher would like to observe the behavior, the attitudes, the feeling or any financial or numerical data available in one's, one's means the researcher's environment. And then he or she tries to find out the broad problem area in that organization. For instance, a sales manager might observe that customers are perhaps not as pleased as they used to be. Now here the researcher is a salesman, a sales manager, who is observing that the customer satisfaction level has been decreased in current time, however, those customers were pleased and fully satisfied from the company's services. So here the sales manager would like to find out what could be the possible variables or factors that are influencing the customer satisfaction level. So this is basically the broader pro broad problem area for this sales manager. Now in the next slide or next coming slides we will try to find out those factors which are affecting the customer satisfaction level so the first step of hypothetical deductive method is to observe the phenomena i try to find out the broad problem area the second step in this research process is to gather the preliminary information now what is that preliminary information gathering involves the seeking of information in depth of what has been observed as we have observed that the sales manager would like to find out the factor which is influencing or affecting the customer satisfaction level so the sales manager could interview the participants that is to ask the customers that why they are not pleased from the customer not from the company's services why the customers are not pleased from the companies services or delivery mechanism and why are they dissatisfied so these those customer or participant can highlight certain factors which sales manager needs to focus or encounter another way around we can also go to the library search in order to find what are those factors which could dissatisfy the customer from any organization so there are two methods and the researcher in this step would like to gather the preliminary information and tries to find out the possible factors which can impact the satisfaction level of the customers. Third step is theory formulation. So after gathering the preliminary information and the possible prospect 
variables which can influence the dissatisfaction level or satisfaction level of the customers. What the researcher does in this hypothetical detective method is to formalize, formulate or make a theoretical or conceptual model or linkages between those variable. So what is theory formulation? Theory formulation is an attempt to integrate all the information in a logical manner which we have gathered in a preliminary information gathering step number two so that the factors responsible for the problem can be conceptualized and tested later on. So a logical link should be made between the variables which can possibly influence the satisfaction level of the customers. Or another way around, we can also explain that the network of association identified among the variables would be theoretically woven together with the justification as to why they might influence the problem. Like it could be the possible delay in the delivery of the product which, which can influence the satisfaction level of the customer. Or if the company is usually stock out or the shelves are empty when the order has been placed by the customer. So this could be possible dissatisfaction factor. So let's see in our next step what the sales manager has highlighted. In the step number four under this research method is to hypothesize. So on the basis of third step of theory formulation or theoretical uh, conceptual model making, we or the researcher normally make a theorize the network of association among the variable and then certain testable hypotheses or educated conjecture can be generated. For instance, as an example, we can see that the sales manager might have hypothesized that if the a sufficient number of items are stocked on a shelf, the cus customer dissatisfaction will be considerably reduced. It means that after getting the preliminary information and making the theoretical conceptual model. The sales manager ha has hypothesized the factor that if the stock on the shelves are available, the customer will get their ordered product within due time and their dissatisfaction level will considerably reduce. So we can test this hypothesis or hypothesized statement in our next data analysis step. These hypotheses are generally conjectures are made on the basis of theoretical conceptual model we have developed in step number three. In this fifth step, which is further scientific data collection and measuring, this step comprises of to, to gather the information about the relevant variables, what the sales manager has highlighted. One of that could be the stock available on the shelves of the company. And as well as it could be the sales representative behavior could be the another factors for the dissatisfaction level of the customer. So the sales manager might observe that phenomena as well. It could be another possible variable which can influence the satisfaction level of the customer. So after the clarification of the variable, what the researcher does in this method is to collect the data of the variables. Like in our case, we have highlighted the stock level and the attitude of the sales representative for, for instance, as an example. So after developing the hypothesis, data with respect to each variable in the hypothesis need to be obtained. The researcher is required to collect the data in this step or further scientific data collection is needed to test the hypothesis that are generated in the study. So what the researcher does, which is sales manager in our case, he or she, he or she will continuously observe the stock level available in the, on the shelves of the company and then find out the customer satisfaction level with the, with the help of a structured or unstructured interviews from the customers, set, customers over their satisfaction level. Basically in this step, 
the data regarding the variables which are dependent and as well as independent variables needs to be collected. The sixth step in this process is the data analysis or the statistical analysis. In this step, the data gathered are statistically analyzed to see if the hypothesis that were generated has have been supported or rejected. The researchers normally establish the hypothesis at step number four, which after the data collection needs to be tested with the help of statistical software packages, which may be, which may be uh, uh, SPSS, eViews, or any other social sciences software. So the researchers, so the researchers can um, test the hypothesis and try to find out whether the null and alternative hypothesis are going to be rejected or fail to reject the null hypothesis. As we have taken a particular example of customer dissatisfaction, so for instance, we can see that if the stock level of the if the stock level influence the customer satisfaction, one might want to do a correlation analysis and try to determine the relationship between two factors. So one of the data analysis method is correlation. It could be regression analysis and as well as descriptor, descriptive statistic can also be used to find out the relationship between the variables. The correlation analysis basically find out the relationship between two variables. So this statistical analysis can help the researcher to find out if the stock level influence the customer satisfaction. Like higher the stock level, the customer satisfaction level will be higher. So if the positive correlation come up between these two variables, it will, it will give the uh, indicator to the researcher that the stock level needs to be maintained high in order to increase the customer satisfaction. The last seven step is the deduction or conclusion. So after performing the statistical analysis at step number six, we arrived at the last step, which is to conclude or deduce our inferences on the basis of hypothetical deductive method. The deduction is the process of arriving at the conclusion by interpreting by interpreting the meaning of the results of the data analysis. So in this step, we analyze the data with the help of statistical packages and then tries to try to find out the conclusion of our research which might be in our case, for instance, that the deduction might look like it was found from the data analysis that increasing the stock was positively correlated to the increased customer satisfaction. So with the help of correlation analysis, we have deduced our conclusion that if the stock level available on the shelves of the company is higher, the customer may not face the delays in the delivery of the products therefore their satisfaction level will be high. So this was all about the hypothetical deductive method of performing research on a broad problem area or any specific area. Thank you very much for listening to this lecture. If you have any question you may ask. Good luck for the day. Allah Hafiz.